I read it OS, your science questions answered. We're back, baby! Welcome to Season 2, Episode 1 of I Read It Online Somewhere. We are here every couple of weeks to discuss what we have read online, answer your strange but wonderful science-based questions like, why is water wet? We also have a brand new section called, tell me you failed science at school without actually telling me you failed science at school, which we'll get to later. I'm Amy, and I failed science at school, but lucky for me, I'm joined by two science teachers, Andrew. Hi. And Ross. Hello, everybody. Welcome. So excited to be back. Um, Our podcast is a look at some of the science stories we read online this week and we try to get your questions answered. If you want to get in touch with your questions, please email email us at ireditos at gmail.com or at ireditos on all social media. (laughs) We're changing things around slightly with our season two. Very American of us. Well, Um, it's all about rebranding and We're no longer I read online somewhere, we're just I read it OS. Yep, we joined Clubhouse. We're totally with it. We're like cool. Yeah, but no one knows what they're doing on Clubhouse. But yeah. No, it's really hard to understand. I I'm don't still really know confused by it. I joined a conversation the other day. It's quite exciting. Oh. Almost spoke and then chickened out. Is right it all live night. Clubhouse? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's like so it's like it's like a massive. It's like ugh, it's so much better than Zoom or something because you don't oh, see okay. anybody, but you do talk. This feels like somewhere Donald Trump or Jeffrey Epstein would hang out. Well. Jeffrey Different Epstein kind of be hanging out there now. Yeah, he's he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> is he? Oh no, that's not the conspiracy. What is it? That he he killed himself. He didn't kill himself. Yeah. Well, this is taking an awkward turn. <laughs> yeah. <This is laughs> season two conspiracy episode. Um. So yeah, anyway, yeah. So we changed things around slightly. Um. So instead of us all coming with one one story each, we've all agreed on a story. Yes, we have. Before, and yep. we've gone away, done a little bit of research on it. I was never great with homework, so I, if I'm honest, I've not done a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm hoping that Ross can. Uh, Luckily, can talk us I was it. a SWAT, so I have done all the reading. Um, so the story we have looked at this week um, is that the number of false widow spiders in the UK and Ireland are on the rise, according to a new study by the University of Ireland, Galway. University of Ireland, Galway. It sounds made up. <laughs> Is it not the University of Ireland? Oh no, wait, hold on. I was like, is it not the University of Ireland, like, Galway, Ireland? I assume they have different campuses. Is that what it is? I don't know. Right, well, University of Ireland. Our friends who listen in Ireland could maybe tell us a wee bit more. Yeah, or I'll just ask my mum because she's actually from Galway. Oh, that would work. Yeah, I think she actually probably went to the University of Galway, so I'll maybe ask her. No, and, it's University of Ireland. Yeah, but there's Galway. two. There is two universities. That's One's the... called NUG, National University Galway. Oh. Is that this one? I don't know. <laughs> Who I'm knows? Gonna, I'll text her so we can get a live update. <laughs> okay, so what they were doing is they were saying that the number of false black widows are on the rise. Now, false black widows are not the same as black widows. Black widows are the very, very, now I'm going to get this right, venomous spiders? Why were you say, so unsure? Well, because I was going to say poisonous. No. I think... Oh. Poisonous means that if you eat it, you die. What's the di- yeah? What's the difference yeah. between ven- venomous and poisonous? And venomous oh, yeah. is if they bite so you, you die. If venomous is yeah, if they bite you, <sighs> you die. If you eat them, you die. Like a poison arrow frog, because you because the frog's not going to bite you. They are they are yes. poisonous, not venomous. Yeah. Yes, but so it's because it's not going to do anything to you. But if you eat it, you'll die. Yes. Or lick it. Or lick it. Wow. I think I think is that not what curare is? I think Sorry? is that not the one that's on frogs? I think that's the the poison that's on frogs. Curare. I I'm not aware. No. But you have to like remember. touch it. I feel like it was on an episode. Of you CSI have to you have to you have to ingest it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. So what happens is when it goes in, um, it um mucks up your enzyme pathways and like stops things from working, which is how you die. Oh. I saw a video of a snake bite. Like mix them with blood, and it coagulates it, it. Yeah, it coagulates. Yeah, it just turned yeah. into like sort of glue. Like didn't realize we were making up words. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Uh, it it, tur- it basically turn it basically turns it into jelly. Or if you've ever had like a Quag- if you've ever cooked steak. Yeah. So if you ever Quag- had like Quag- steak, and you know how sometimes you get that like blood coming out and it like yeah. hits the hot pan and it kind of goes like brown. Yeah. 
that's I mean that's not coagulation but that's kind of an idea of what's happening oh. kind of becomes solid and then it when can I um, use that in a sentence thingy. coagulate I was bitten by a spider and my <laughs> blood coagulated <laughs> yeah. I think it's a lovely word it is, it's a, it is it's a lovely word it is nice it's fun to mm-hmm. say everyone coagulate coagulate like moving on <laughs> <laughs> well I know what this episode is going to be called <laughs> coagulate <laughs> Um, so, <laughs> so the um yeah basically that's uh the false widow spider is an invasive species um Ooh. which was brought here from the canary islands uh about 100 years or so ago very glamorous um and it's uh, starting to spread throughout the uk it started oh, no, wait. south of the uk sorry canary canary islands is just like tenerife yeah Oh, I had in my head the K- Cayman Islands. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, very glamorous. Different, thing. Uh, different. Tenerife. Different mm-hmm. offshore account place. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so basically they're, they're, they're spreading everywhere. And the reason they're problematic is because everyone traditionally thinks that uh, you can't get, if you, if you get bitten by a spider in the UK, you're fine, nothing's ever going to happen to you. Um, whereas if you get if you're an Australian and get bitten by a spider, you need to be you need to go to a hospital and you need to know what spider you got bit by and hopefully they can save you. Uh, whereas a false widow spider does actually give you a bit of a bite um, and if you're frail, quoting directly from the, the news article here, uh, then you could die from it. Oh. Um, but most other spiders in the UK, if they bite you, they they're just not uh, they're not venomous enough to cause any damage. But that the false widow one can be. Oh, there you go. I wonder. Like, did you say sorry? They were brought in um, hundreds of years ago or something. Yes. Uh, not hundreds. Sorry, not a hundred. Not hundreds. Um, uh, well, I think it did say eighteen something. But oh, is that if Victorians again bringing in hundred hundred forty years ago? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, see the Victorians. They are responsible. Here's my thing against the Victorians. You guys out there listening, Victorians, you know who you are. Right, you spoiled it for the rest of us. You are right. definitely getting haunted tonight. Just to let you know, yeah. <laughs> you brought us. You brought us the. I'm quite sure you're Sewer responsible system. for grey squirrels, um, which are an invasive species. You brought in us the black false black widow spider, and you also brought us in coloured rhododendrons, which are an invasive species. And hogweed, you know that giant hogweed. Oh, that's yeah, super wait, I did dangerous. Want, this I did want to yeah. mention the giant hogweed because I'd never heard about this till I met you. What, giant hogweed. Yeah. You're always talking to me about giant hogweed. Um, Andrew told me about it. Andrew, teach us. Tell me more. Giant it, hogweed. It's yeah, tell me what it was like back kill in the day. You. Oh yeah. Well, no, no, no. It can't kill you. No, it's the stuff. Right. Um, it's been in the news recently because it's the stuff that if the sap gets on your skin, it causes a a reaction. You can you can have a quite a severe reaction to light. Um, but we actually have a there is a British version. Um, that is called uh cows. Cow's parsley, uh, which is like a smaller version, which doesn't have the same effects. Um, but yeah, it grows down near rivers and stuff. You'll see it's absolutely massive. It's um, usually near like roads and stuff. It, yeah, it's really and it's it. it's really bad. Like, um, but they, they, like that's an invasive species that was brought over because it looks nice. Because that's what the Victorians were really good at. They were collectors, so they brought in loads of things that like look nice or they thought was nice, but actually is quite bad the other ones the um i can't no, remember what not, it's actually called not just things um they also do some bad there, stuff yeah. with people as well yeah <laughs> but the um the other ones the it's like giant rhubarb i can't remember what it's called but it's it's very similar to rhubarb. rhubarb it's just huge is that what it's called i don't know what it's called i don't know that rings a bell oh, they've got some of the botanics um, yeah yeah is it called it is. An el- and it's rhubarb? and it's because of that so so they were brought into things like botanical gardens which is really great but then obviously you know victorians just wanted it in their houses and stuff baths like they loved a bath yep the swimming pool. But again, I don't think baths are invasive species. Yeah, and probably more to do with Romans <laughs> like bringing them over yeah. than Victorians. I thought it was Victorians, the baths. Like, there's like three swimming pools that are Victorian swimming pools in Edinburgh. No, that was the Romans. No, like the Victorian baths, no? Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, or so, Victoria so swimming plumbing. Swimming pools, yeah. <laughs> Sponsor. <laughs> shout, shout out, 10% off. So it's Victoria Plumbing and their online version, which is somehow half the price, Victoria Plum. Nothing to do with the original Victoria plumbing. But grapefruit. Yes. Yes. Um, so how did we get on from false widow spiders? Right, so invasive Victorians? species. I think we invasive can have a, species. Because we could yeah. talk a few things about invasive species here. So 
Um, there's a couple other invasive species to the UK, but one of them is actually being viewed favourably. So we were saying, um, like, giant hogweed's not good. Uh, and that is a scorpion. Oh. A golden something scorpion. I should really know that other word because I just read it, but I forgot. Um, let's go with tailed. Golden tailed scorpion. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate sure it. All the facts. No, no. no. <laughs> Golden tail scorpions um, are now wild in the UK and have really? been for about 50 years or so, yeah. I would be very on edge if I saw a scorpion. Yeah, but I, again, luckily we live in Britain. Um, these ones, while they can sting you, aren't uh, going to kill you. And they're just. It's their tail that stings sing. you, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I remember meeting one at the Butterfly World. Oh, Butterfly World scares me. For anybody who doesn't know, guys, uh, Butterfly World is. A literally what it says on the tin <laughs> it's a world of butterflies but that is also where i got my fear of bees and wasps because they have a, a wasp bee, bee a bee sort of section and i couldn't go through it my grand took me there when i was like eight <gasps> i hate it Absolutely you know it. you know butterflies love sweat um so they're like attracted to sweat ross is quite sweaty so when we went to the butterfly farm they like oh, they just used to always that, land on him that see that just telling me that freaks me out <laughs> i don't like butterflies really I, yeah i don't trust them i'm sorry Psycho. you can't go you can't basically go into stop a telling them your secrets turn into a mush and then suddenly be like oh hey i'm a butterfly now that is pretty oh, crazy man. that they it, it's not like they just go grow wings inside the people no. they actually like disassemble they go themselves into, mush. into a soup and then yeah. Do they? reorganize and yeah. then boom butterfly Oof. i never i never i always wondered like what they did might put a camera on one mm-hmm. what's that a chrysalid chrysalis yeah Crystals. Well yeah, yeah. Mm. But um I'm just gonna jump back on my bandwagon there yeah. about Victorians and then bringing in invasive species into this country. Oof. Right. Do you know one invasive species that they have brought in which actually is not invasive and actually um because the the species is actually maintained to a small island? Rats. A little bit bigger than a rat. Elephant. It, it's a marsupial. <laughs> It's a, a it, it's a, a marsupial, not a wombat, but closely related to What's a wombat. What's a marsupial? <laughs> what did you say? Sorry. A marsupial. Oh, a marsupial. marsupial. Yeah, I'm like a, a monkey. Marsupial. No. 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 <laughs> Remember, marsupial marsupials have the pouch. They have the pouch. Oh, kangaroo. Smaller than a kangaroo. Wallaby. A wallaby. There is an the island least of wallabies. An Australian animal, because well, wombats no. poo cubes and kangaroos are big and cool and fight. And wallabies are just this pathetic in between thing. Wait, what? But where are wallabies in the UK? In I think it's near Loch Lomond. There is a little what? island full of full of native wallaby. What do they eat? Like, how are do they you survive? getting confused with the zoo? I am not getting confused with the zoo. Look it up. Go look it up now. Wild we'll do it. We're going to do a live fact check. What do they like? I just want to know how they survive. Oh, they just well they they eat the vegetation around the area, so they'll be adapted to the um eating the vegetation around the area. Now I'm like, how do you spell wallaby? I'm just gonna do it phonetically. Oh, yeah, I was works. like, I was like, oh. I, was like, I, no, I, 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 I didn't I, know if it had like a G and H in it. You know how some of these cheeky ones do. Darn. Wallaby me. Island, Scotland. So we can go to Victorians destroying stuff with invasive species. It's just come up saying Edinburgh Zoo. No, I'm joking. Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> no, we've been here, Ross. Inchkin Conkin. Inchkinochen. Oh, they do have a bungalow on it. They've got a four-bedroom lodge. C- Cahoon, isn't it? Oh, is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, <laughs> call Cahoon. I'm struggling here, and I've already forgotten that really nice-sounding word. Squealy or something. Quackly. Quackly. <laughs> Quackly. <laughs> Squealy. Yeah, so, the, yeah, the, the Colhoun's Island, or that's what it means in Gaelic. Colhoun? How did you know that that was Colhoun and not, like, Colquan? Gaelic. Ah, yeah. Okay. All right, sorry. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, and they they have like wallabies there, which I think is like just fascinating. Introduced by cool. Lady. Oh, I, however, I do stand corrected, <laughs> guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna stand back. It's actually not the Victorians. It was some lady <sighs> in the 1940s. Oh, that's like that's like a hundred years later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, okay. what we can what, go back to Victoria. Okay, cool. No, but what area of measurement is ha? Hectares. Just, it says Hectares. area. Oh, right. I was just like, what is ha? <laughs> it's 35 has. Ha, 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 ha. That's huge, then, no? <laughs> that, it is huge, yeah. Oh. It's Highest elevation is 50 metres, in case you're wondering. Thanks for that. It's okay, so anyway, we might go. 
But yeah, yeah so I just can I, I was can like, I talk about Australia? Okay, cool. Because uh, Australia is one that like we've done a lot of damage with, because it was so untouched for so long by humans that when we turned up, we brought in a a whole lot of bad stuff. Um, so one of the ones we did is there was um people's farms kept getting um all the the food they were growing kept getting eaten by animals, so they brought in this toad to eat all the insects that were eating it. Um, but the toad was poisonous um, and ended up killing off all the local wildlife and then basically overran the place because it had, as well as it having loads of food to eat, it didn't have any predators because nothing could eat it. Oh, um, which so is, now have uh, yeah. to have the huge like, f- like frog culls or toad culls every year. And that's they... your that's your like a definition of an invasive species is that there's wow. no um, there's no natural predators or things like that. It's quite bad. Wow. Yeah. They all, Australia also brought in mixed mitosis because they had so many rabbits. Oh, they had so many rabbits um, that they brought in. They made this like I think it was Australia. I was hoping one of you'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But they brought in. Maybe I'll double check this. <laughs> But they brought in this um, like disease that like it's actually like horrible. It's over here now, and it makes rabbits like go insane. Oh wait, sorry. Are you uh, sorry? I thought you were asking to fact check the rabbit if it came from Australia. I know what mixed mitosis is. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because my yeah. sister's rabbits got mixed mitosis. Yeah. So they it's quite it in to Australia. Yeah, I'm but it's sure. not that it's not that common for um, like pet rabbits. Cause no, sister, wild so, rabbits in the in the UK, yes, but not. Yeah, these but we got them from a farm, and when we took them to the vet, the vet said, "Have he's never seen it?" Yeah. He's like, but this is what it is. Oh, he's never seen it. Oh, it's really weird. I don't the, think he'd the, ever seen it in like pet rabbits because usually oh, yeah. you get them from like um, pets at home or whatever. So they're like yeah. bred and captivity. <laughs> but this was like a farm. Oh. So a wild rabbit obviously got in there. Well, um, I know that we are um, we went off topic there with the Victorians. I'm so sorry. Stand on my <laughs> soapbox. But I, I actually went and researched um, mimicry, um, which I don't know if you know what that is. Oh, I, so I can take a guess. okay. So I'm, the only thing I know is a coral snake and a grass snake. Now, one of them is dangerous, one of them is not, but they both have like red and black and white stripes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Have I just stolen all your thunder? Um, no, 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 you haven't. No, no, because I'm gonna. I'm gonna <laughs> what, talk so they about look the exact same. You, you look, you yeah, look a bit sad. There, so like I just uh, a, a, a coral snake is poisonous, and the the stripes, the banding on them are. Uh, the black and red are evenly distributed and mm-hmm. the yellow is kind of in the middle but on a scarlet king snake which is the other one um they are the same color bandings they're yellow black red but they're um the black is actually a lot narrower um oh, so they, they, they do look slightly different yeah but that is a, that is a great example of of mimicry which is where one animal uh, tries to look like another animal for uh, either protection, protection or or to ward off other other uh, insects etc um so you so can see basically it with... influencers these snakes uh, it's like the yeah equivalent or of like a modern day influencer on instagram you know like someone gets molly may from love island gets big eyebrows everyone gets big eyebrows I, I similar molly may is but yeah sure <laughs> yeah mm-hmm mm-hmm but yeah, Mim- yeah. Mimicry, I tell you. Mim- mimicry, yeah. So oh, mimicry is is quite cool because you've obviously, well, actually, if we go back to our butterfly chat. Oh, that's um, what I was going to say. There's a butterfly that looks like an owl. Yeah, I mean, just stealing a thunder out from under. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Scar, you stick to your. Oh head. no, I've seen that one as well <laughs> on his wings. Um, his on his wings, yeah, it looks like, like eyes. Yeah. yeah. So the other I've one, the that. other one is like the mimicry where you can, uh, like you can have like fish have false eyes etc so they have like black spots yeah. on their back so it makes them look bigger um i don't know if you've seen this one i'll try and send you a picture but if you know what caterpie looks like from uh, pokemon, pokemon. I'm familiar. Um, there, oh, there is, is there is a, a caterpillar that looks like that that's able to swell its head so it looks a lot bigger and there's one that looks like a snake or its tail end looks like a snake it kind of uh-huh. curls it up and it looks like a snake's head with the eyes at either side I think it's and, in that um, one, yeah. Yeah, it's really, it's so fascinating. Not to be confused, though, with camouflage. So yeah. camouflage is completely different. Camouflage is where you try and make yourself look like an inanimate object. Like a stick so insect. Like a, a stick insect or like a, a, a leaf chameleon. or something like that. Or a chameleon. That's that's completely different. So that's camouflage as opposed to 
um, Mim- mimicry. Mimicry. Yeah. Lovely words. So mimicry, you have to. It's of another animal. Of another animal. Okay, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So like the bees and wasps and hornets, they oh, all they are all mimics fire? of each other. And that's and that's Why? one of the things that, that, is that, that, that is a good so question. that you don't disturb them. Because bees, well, we don't disturb. Well, yeah, but which which ones the like the badass like don't disturb me and who's copying? Because they've all got stings. Um. So technically, the bee is copying. Okay. Because they don't want to use their stings, whereas yeah, wasps do use their stings. And and there's um, some bees that don't have um, stripes, isn't it? Is yeah. it honey bees don't have stripes? I thought honey bees. Well, they they have stripes, but they're a darker color. Yeah, they're they just um, they don't they're sting. not they're not that bright. Uh, no, they don't sting because they are the way that they are their sort of stinger bit is attached to them. If they sting, it's almost like they can't get it out without ripping off their abdomen, which is kind of an inconvenient. Oh, not ideal. Yeah. Whereas wasps so. just come along and go yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. that. But. Ooh. I, I hate to and I really hate bees and wasps in the sense of I just hate the buzzing um, to stand up for the wasps because someone has to Oof. Um, if we didn't have wasps we would have significantly massive problems with other insects because they're all part of the food web so we we need wasps to control the spiders and that that's how <gasps> and we that, and that. that brings us full circle to false widow spiders thank you well done good chat guys um, that was our journey of the day. <laughs> Thank you for joining the us there. <laughs> I feel like um, there's a Sesame Street there, like just wrapping up there. Well done. Thanks. Yeah, very neat. Thank, um, I feel like I'm getting loads of pats on the back here. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Yeah, can we have some? Um, <laughs> tell me you failed science at school without telling me you failed science at school. I'll go first. Supposing you brought the light inside the body, you can, which you can do either through the skin or uh, in some other way. And I think you said you're going to test that too. Sounds interesting. We'll the right, folks to right, and then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there. Um, this week we've decided to go, although it was a few months ago, with what Donald Trump said, which was um, that we should drink bleach to get rid of COVID 19. So. Uh, you, you've done that very like seductively. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Hi everybody. And this is the part of the program where we get our ASMR chat out. What's ASMR? I'm just going to rip something and rob something here. What's ASMR? The that like slowly opening a bottle or a lid or like it makes really nice soft. Ross, I can't it, help if they've just got a really nice sounding voice. Everybody talks like this. <clears throat> Do I need to repeat it's it Charlie. again? No, doing it. No, I was Charlie just Nigella. Just yeah, stop channeling Nigella. <laughs> We're not in a darkened kitchen at midnight cooking. She is mental. Why is she cooking at midnight? Microwave. No one's coming around. <laughs> um, anyway. During the day, you psychopath. Okay. So we all know that bleach is bad to drink, but then we kind of decided to explain why it's actually bad to drink. Um, I thought it was Dettol, so I've just gone away and researched Dettol and why Dettol specifically is bad to drink. So... Right. Oh, same thing. Is it the same thing? Yeah. Well, they're they're both. They're I don't both, think like, Dettol's is as extreme as bleach, though. No, it, it, it's not. It's not the same thing as bleach. Um, so but Dettol it is just will as have bad. a bleach. One of the mm. products will be bleach. Sure. Um, okay. So, so and... the, the first thing Trump said was actually about light getting inside the body. Ross, please take <laughs> take it away. Ross, do you miss hosting? <laughs> I miss hosting. But the the feedback was I shouldn't host. So, <laughs> from I think, um, other yeah, Trump, probably something to do with all your coughing. Trump said about we've tried we've tried light and that working well, so we'll put some light inside the body. Uh, that was one of the things he said. Well, so why would light work well? Like, so does it mean UV light? I presume it means ultraviolet light, which kills um, bacteria, and I'd imagine you could probably have a good shot at denaturing. Is denaturing the right word? Denaturing a virus. No. Um, uh, probably DNH in the DNA that's inside the virus. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah, because you you shouldn't use kill a virus, should you? Because you can't kill a virus because it's not alive. Well, in all yeah. the in all the advertisement, it's like kills ninety nine point nine percent of viruses. Of bacteria. No, I think it does not say viruses. No, but... they say bacteria because you can only uh... kill bacteria. Yep. Um, so yeah, I I don't know how he's trying to put light inside the body. But that was his first stupid thing. But then he went on to the bleach stuff. I am. Um, I actually think him and Gillian McKeith have been talking. 
Do you remember <laughs> Julie McKee? Oh, Julie McKee. Talk to Julie McKee. She yeah, really she, went. She, she was all right say, until and the slip. She th- really opening up people's poos and I was looking at. She um, she used to say if you eat dark green leafy vegetables, they really oxidize the cl- the chlorophyll in the leaves will oxidize your blood because of photosynthesis. Um, but there is no light in your body. So that's not going to do anything. So that doesn't work. <laughs> no. Dr. Gillian. Well, depend, um, so by light, if you mean visible light, that's probably not getting far into your body. You can actually get a bit of light through your body. Um, if you like switch on your torch or your phone and put your fingers in front of it. Ah, yeah, uh, but that's not your digestive like, tract, though, is it? No, no, it'll have no effect on COVID, but light can get a little bit into your body. Yeah, yeah. But... Not, that's how your that's actually how your like that's how your that's how Apple watches and all those watch trackers that's how they work. Yeah, yeah, it's just flashing the light a, shining a light. at the back. Yeah. However, bleach. I think we should just caveat this first by going, folks. Please do not, in any way, shape, or form, consume bleach or mm-hmm. any other product like that. If you do, or lights, please don't, seek, don't eat light bulbs. Please, please seek medical attention as soon as possible. Yes. What? Why? Yeah. Well, why? Why? I'll tell you why. Because bleach um, <laughs> is corrosive, so um, it will actually eat through your uh, insides. Quite so just, damaging. So it's it's an alkali, isn't it? Uh, yes. Yeah. So it's it's a strong alkali. Um, so it works in the same way as an acid. So most, for some reason, most people can picture an acid and can. can Picture that burning. Yeah, I thought something. I thought bleach would be acidic. If you ask me, well, it, it, it's uh, it's doing a similar thing. It's, sim- it's yeah, yeah. Is it like, like a good like pH twelve? Is it really yes. like four fourteen? Yeah. Is it? Yeah, it would be. Yeah. <laughs> good yeah, job. So nice. Acids have H plus ions, and that reacts um, to create water. And in reacting, it burns through quite a lot of organic stuff, um, and not not even organic metals metals yeah um and then the same happens with oh minus which is the hydroxide which is your your alkalis and they'll they'll do the same or similar reaction they're, they're trying to make water and in doing that break stuff down break right. stuff down yeah you've also got would like, you die um, from it yes you did potentially even if you just had like a wee bit yeah okay, if you got yeah. <laughs> if it got a hole in your stomach for example then your blood's gonna go to your stomach um and coagulate well coagulate. actually Ooh, well hello. not really actually coagulate it'll just digest but yeah and, and stuff will go into your blood that shouldn't be there as well i'd imagine yeah. but you'll also have like um there's also clo- chlorine is found in some of them because it's an oxidizer um oh. and obviously chlorine gas is highly corrosive and toxic poison yeah um wow. used in world war one um so i googled De- I, when I was googling this, I googled Dettol. Well, first of all, I found out that they are they a third sponsor. Like we said, no, four percent of Americans drunk bleach last year. Oh dear! And do you know the Trump thing was over a year ago? I thought it was just like six months ago. <laughs> like, yeah, a few months. I, was, I don't know what day or the week it is at the moment. But the funniest thing is, I was on. Have you guys ever been on Quora? It's this place where you ask questions. Um, nope. Uh, it's it's a bit weird. So this guy, someone asked a question about. Someone asked a question about drinking um, bleach, and a guy wrote eight reasons why you shouldn't. And they're just, they're kind of like, you might develop mouth ulcers, your taste buds won't be the same, your tongue might get burned, your body will be dehydrated. And then at the end, he goes, This is based on personal experience, by the way. Oh, no. <laughs> this is the guy that oh, has wow. drunk Dettol. So he's sharing, in fairness, he is sharing his advice on why you shouldn't drink Dettol, but. Uh, yeah, it turns out a lot of um, like Americans have been gargling bleach, dental, etc. Um, well, like yeah, like um, uh, like hydrogen peroxide. You can. I put that in my hair, though, right? You can, yeah, yeah, same stuff. You and in dilute forms, you can like gargle with it. You can use it as like, mouthwashes and stuff. But again, you wouldn't want highly concentrated versions of it if it's undiluted. I've heard of people trying to dye their hair like cheap, like they want to bleach it, and they'll use like house bleach, which is is not the same. Yeah, oh, is just it not? Yeah, hair. they're they're two completely different things. Ah, okay. That that hair, the uh, house bleach can potentially like dissolve hair. Wow. 
But it's hydrogen peroxide will probably just strip the color. Yeah, true. Cool. So that was uh, yeah. our... So Trump probably failed science at school. Probably. Yep. Well, maybe we'll try and find out what his grades were. Yeah, I'm sure we could. Considering um, he cheats and pretty much everything else, I imagine. Yeah. I mean, he, he didn't release his taxes, but his uh, school records, maybe. Yeah. yeah. What do they, what's it called? Like, what's your GPA? You know, G- Amy, your dad's favourite fact is... Oh, that... my dad's favourite fact is this book <laughs> it's called a... Commander and Cheat. And it's about how he cheated at like a couple of golf games. He cheats games. at golf. But basically, if his caddy doesn't <laughs> cheat for him, then his, the caddy gets fired. Wow. Yeah, so the caddy has to like... So he needs to not know he's cheating. But if, he, if the caddy doesn't like help him out, prefer his lie and all this sort of stuff, then uh, the caddy will get fired. Ugh. he's a nice guy yeah. um, right okay we're going to move on to questions this week so we'll okay. see how quickly we can rattle through these um, question number one is from Sally or Sal I don't know why I said or Sal because <laughs> I don't know her but anyway um, and she has asked why is water wet which has really boggled my mind it's just it sounds quite, like a physics question it's just quite stressful like why <laughs> why is it wet well uh, we, we've well, had a discussion could, about this before. You could just break it down to the chemicals. Is it? So what What do you mean by wet? I don't know how else I can describe the word wet. Molly like soaked in water. Just so, yeah, wet. So, <laughs> so can water itself <laughs> be wet? Oh, this is a bit to, to be or not to be. <laughs> this is a bit I think therefore I am it's a bit, a bit too philosophical yeah philosophical? It is, it's a bit philosophical 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 lots of yeah. big words like yeah this, we're back this we're back with a dictionary boom hello yeah thesaurus but yeah <laughs> no, dictionary. no dictionary well thesaurus because you're making like baby kangaroo tribbiani <laughs> we're not <laughs> no we're not changing <laughs> We've not changed the word. We've not okay, tried to well, do you know words. what? I'm coming with a thesaurus. Uh, you can baby kangaroo. Okay, I've got a baby kangaroo. <laughs> I hope anyone who watches Friends gets that reference. Um, okay, so it, why is water wet? Surely it's just to do with the chemical of hydrogen, two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. Very good. Hello. Oh, <laughs> hydrogen someone monoxide. went to school. Whoop, someone didn't fail science. Oh, yes, she did. did. <laughs> yes, she did. Um, yeah, so... I, I don't know, yeah. I think it is a bit philosophical. Like, can something is wet when it's covered in water? So, it, can water be wet? But, so why is it wet? So, I don't know. So, I'm asking you. Ross, well, I think, Ross, this is really I, I baffled think, Ross. I think <laughs> that's the thing is that it's actually quite hard to define it. Uh, the, so, the, water can make the things wet. wet. Let, let's see what Google yeah. says. But it's because, like, um, it's the fact that it's the idea of a state of something so like yeah. the, the the way that the molecules are because as well obviously you have to remember that the molecules aren't necessarily touching each other um and they're not technically touching us because there's actually a tiny little gap but the 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 wetness comes from the fact that it is a liquid so that's kind of why water is wet because it's a liquid well this is i'm googling it and there's various things but someone said Liquid water is not itself wet, but can make other solid materials wet. Wetness is the ability of a liquid to adhere to the surface of a solid. So when we say that something is wet, we mean that the liquid is sticking to the surface of a material. That sounds like an excellent answer. Yep. So we'll that's called just, that's called let adhesion. Me, let me just read that out. And we'll cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just get Ross yeah. to, to read it out rather than him being like, uh... say what? Yeah. Okay. So sorry. That was oh, a bit of a tricky question. In, Amy, just say like, um, "Oh, I think I know this one." Like, it's going to be pretty obvious considering I've said about a thousand <laughs> words wrong and didn't know something really basic a minute ago. That I'm not just going to come out with that big sentence. We could, well, we could have done some movie magic, but um, no, I'm I'm not a commander in cheat. Oh, if you cut much. the Donald Trump bit out of the book, that's going to make no sense. <laughs> <laughs> I cut that bit too. We're off it. Um, oh, poor me. Okay, next question is from Nicholas, and he is asked, "What is beyond space?" Again, a bit physicsy. Sorry, Andrew. It's quite all right. Quite all right. But yeah, what is uh, like space is just everything, is it not? Yeah, well, space is nothing. Oh well, God! Why is this so like, <laughs> philosophical? So what is know. well? What is beyond space? If you get to the edge of space, how long the would that take? Do you mean the edge of the universe? 
I think that's what he means. I'll okay. go with it. I'll speak for Nicholas. So if you get to the edge of the universe, there's nothing. But how? But time, I feel like space is nothing. So time just... hasn't started there yet. If you've got to the edge of the universe. But what would you see? Nothing. But the space is nothing because it's just black. Well, the, yeah, but there's there's nothing there's nothing uh, um, there's nothing past that point because that's as far as we've observed. Yeah, but what would you see though? No, no, so if you were there, no, we can't. We you'd, can't see. You'd see what we see here. You see stars in every direction, and then there'd be an end of the universe where we are now. That would be the end of the universe, and that's you would see our not our star, but the star two times before our star being born at the edge of. Ah, uh, okay. So it's just like because time light takes time to travel to us. So when we so you just seen like a big bang or something happening. Yeah. So when we like, look oh. at the edge of the universe, we're looking thirteen point seven billion or thirteen point eight, I think it is now billion years in the past and you're seeing the first star so i'm looking in the past now yeah if you every time you look up if you look at another star yeah even the sun's eight minutes away from us oh our nearest star is five or around about five light years away so it's taken five years for that light to get to us although if you ask uh douglas adams i believe at the edge of the universe is a restaurant. Uh, is this from Hitchhiker's Guide? Or something? Yeah, Amy. I've never actually seen it. I just had a feeling it was from that. I'll Especially one of the it, other books. But yeah, that's really insulting. Nice, cool. Uh, no, good, good, good question. Good. I like that. Okay, good. You just expect space. It's your favorite. Thing. I know, but um, you usually get asked about animals and stupid stuff. Do we so. have time for one last Whoa. question? Whoa! <laughs> 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 we have a blatant attack. A <laughs> Do we have time for one last question? Yes, we do. Okay, so this is from James, and he has asked, why do animals walk on tiptoes, but humans don't? Oh. I and this freaked me out, because I was just thinking, imagine like a dog, and like you see their like paws. They are like... They're, they're like walking on fingers and toes. They're walking on than... fingers and toes. Yeah. But we walk on like a... Well, do we? Foot. Yeah, no, because the dog's toes cl- cl- are surely like their claws. And the but claws like the don't touch the ground. The dog's thumb's like halfway up its um, like forepaw. Yeah. So so everything from there is just like its four fingers like down the way. Right. Like yeah, what so you describe as the dog's ankle is just four. The ankle is actually, his it's ankle's awesome. actually the rest. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so they don't have a foot, they've just got like an ankle. No, then... I mean, so so a bit, a bit like as we've got, it's called the pentadactyl limb, which is the five, anything with five fingers, pentadactyl, penta, five. Very Latin and of you. And thanks. You've got, um, so yeah, like Ross says, the, the thumb of a dog is halfway up its leg. Um, but the joint at the bit that's on, that's the pad is actually his, is their, um, is their kind of wrist this sort of section here as they're they're putting it down um so lots of animals walk on their sort of tiptoes and our nails so horses are the same i think we've oh. discussed this before yeah we discussed um, issues season two they, you start like, like it, teach it us sort all. of um their nails kind of have all merged into one uh, oh. which is what becomes the hoof so that's the nails that you're actually walking on um so bats niche. have the same sort of thing so bats have the same sort of layout that we do um, they have a shoulder, they have an elbow, they have a the wrist, which is at the top of the wing, and then each of their fingers becomes one of the sort of structures for their um for for their wings, so that the bits oh. that come out. Whales are the same. Uh, whales don't walk. Whales. But no, but whales the have they they they, they, they have the bones etc. and fins that are the same sort of layout as ours. So if you take your hand, it's the um. Uh, the phalanges, carpals, metacarpals. Sorry. Well, you've got your uh, metacarpals, carpals here, okay. which are, are these bones here, and then you've got your phalanges, your fingers, your digits, and they are all sort of merged into a fin shape, which, right. which swims through. So if you ever see a, um, I think if you, you know if you, you're able to go back into the museum, um, have a look in the museum in Edinburgh. They've That's got all you're allowed to a, do. A look, you're not allowed to touch anything. Um, but you can see that you can see the hands. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Like, displays. there's there's so many things that like have this this pentadactyl limb, um, which demonstrate uh, relatedness. Um, so mm. evolutionary tract uh, is relatedness. So 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 most mammals have them, for example. Why? Oh, almost all mammals have them. Yeah. But do, do any animals walk like on their heels like we do? 
Or does you it don't meant to walk in your heel, eh? Yeah. Do just... you mean the? Do you mean the base of like? Do you mean along the foot bit? I mean my heel. Ross Ross has insoles. He doesn't walk properly anyway. No, but you know when you walk, your heel goes oh, that's down, your arch, and you go into the ball of the foot, and then you go onto your toes. But like elephants, for example, they just walk on their toes, and then they've got this yeah, because they've because they've got they they walk as if they're basically walking on um, tiptoes, are they? They walk as if they're walking on uh, high heels. So yeah. they've got they 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 have their they have their their foot which sort of sets it like forty five degrees, and then actually at the back they have a big pad which is what um. they they hit on the floor and they ro- they roll they kind of go down and roll their foot. Yeah. Um, but does does any animal so my the only one is I feel like monkeys. my heel bone hits the ground when I walk. Monkeys, monkeys are gorillas. Yeah. They're they, they, and that that's that's the thing is is it actually has to be a biped that would do it the most. Yeah. Okay. Um, everything that's someone else. That I, walks on two legs. Something that walks on two legs, but then of course you know, like chickens obviously don't do it, or birds yeah, I was gonna say, don't yeah, do birds it. Don't. They they walk on their 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 sort of um, oops. They walk on their um, claws, fingers, yeah, toes hmm. type things, yeah. Nice. But that's all. It's all to do with. Um, I just feel we should all be running around in it. our toes and have really long toes, and we could run much faster. Well. You could, but there's um, the other issue is like muscles. We need stronger calf muscles and oh, okay. thigh muscles. Yeah, okay. To have the the difference between uh, fast twitch and slow twitch muscles, you need a higher combination of fast twitch muscles to run faster. So if you're fast on your feet, you can get to a computer quickly, and actually start to follow us on our social medias. So we are on all social media platforms. At I read it OS. Uh, you can drop us an email at I read it OS at gmail.com and please feel free to go and check us out and drop us some questions. And we will see you next episode. Yep. Tell someone see about you. us. Bye. Bye. Love you. Bye.